Okay, welcome everybody. We are here today with Dr. Shelley Lane, who is a professor in the Department of Occupational Therapy at Colorado State University. Welcome. Um, so we're gonna talk about your new book, um, Sensory Integration Theory and Practice, third edition. Um, and if uh, those people in the audience are like me, the pages on all of my previous copies are well-worn um, and well used. So we're, we've been eagerly awaiting this updated edition. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about your recommendations for how clinicians and researchers can best use this information to enhance their practice. So welcome, Dr. Lane. Thank you. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background? Oh, gosh. Okay. Um, let's see. I have almost always been a pediatric therapist um, or taught pediatrics in some way, shape, or form. Um, I learned sensory integration first from my friend and mentor, Virginia Scardina, and this took place in the mid-70s, um, so quite some time ago. Ginny was um, sort of the guru um, in the mid Midwest in Ohio. Um, and I had the amazing opportunity to be a fieldwork student with her. And then later actually to work with her, um, with her fieldwork program. Working with her, and Ginny had a way of assuming that you could do something that you thought was so far out of your wheelhouse that you couldn't even believe the words came out of her mouth. And she had me doing a lot of neuro teaching. Um, and through that process, I decided that I needed a whole lot more information on neuroscience in order to really put the pieces together for sensory integration. So I went back uh, to school and got a PhD in neuroscience. I did a postdoc at the Neuropsychiatric Institute at UCLA to try and bridge the gap between what I did for my PhD, which was animal research, um, to what I wanted to do, which was uh, working with kids. So I, I did a postdoc uh, with Ed Ornitz at the Neuropsych Institute. I have been teaching um, aspects of sensory integration certification courses since 1980, um, so for a very long time. And um, recently what I've begun doing is teaching separate neuroscience courses um, that are neuroscience applied to sensory integration. And I've just recently done that in Brazil. Um, and it was offered in advance of the uh, first module of the Classy series, which is the Theory Foundation. Um, so that's, that's me in a nutshell. So how do people access that course? It sounds fabulous. Um, well, this was face-to-face. Mm -hmm. um, and in Brazil, I actually did two courses. I did an advanced neuroscience course for three days and then a basic one for two days. Um, it's a course that would be difficult to put online. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I guess people just ask me to come and teach. Well, I guess we're going to have to do that. <laughs> um, it's, it's always interesting to hear people's background because, you know, how those very early experiences in our career have really shaped who we are and where we've gone. And this, your background in neuroscience has been so strong and has really carried through to all of your research activities as well. Um, I know this book was sort of long in the making, um, but I wonder um, if you can talk a little bit about how it's organized, what special features you might want to point out that people can access depending on their interests or their professional needs. Yeah, sure. Um, organized. The book has what has become very routine features, things like uh, learning outcomes embedded in each chapter, 
But through this book, we've actually also incorporated case examples and case studies in almost every chapter. Um, and within some chapters, it's the major focus. And so I think that will help to ground this theoretical approach in um, clinical uh, examples. Um, we've also included in each chapter summary points that we've called, here's the point, um, after each major section. We have uh, boxes that are called practice wisdom, which take the content, the theoretical content, and apply it to practice. And then we also have boxes that are called, here's the evidence, trying to link these theoretical constructs back to the research that is available. Um, and on that line, we've really worked hard to incorporate research throughout the whole book. We, and that is you and I, um, have a couple of chapters in this book on research, but we've also encouraged all of the contributors. And uh, let me say a word about the contributors. There are a myriad of contributors to this book, and they are experts from around the world. So it, it has that really nice expert uh, input. Um, and we encouraged everybody to thread research throughout their chapters. So with that in mind, um, would a, a clinician reading a particular section be able to use that research? Let's say if we're talking about the um, uh, incidents of sensory processing and integration challenges in children who may not have other um, can, other diagnoses. Um, answering the question, is this real, is it a standalone kind of um, condition? Would there be data that somebody could refer to when somebody says, yeah, but I don't believe you. You know, that's not what I see in my practice, whether it's a pediatrician or a, a PA or somebody else in the medical field? Yeah, um, I think you would find that information in one of the research chapters mm -hmm. where it would be very concentrated, but also in, in those here's the evidence boxes. We take a point and um, talk about it in a little bit more detail and provide the reference. Um, many of the chapters also have additional resources at the end, and oftentimes those resources are citations of research. That's great. So if you were like an entry-level clinician, you just graduated, you, you're excited about this new job that you have, um, working in a pediatric clinic with children who have sensory integration challenges, um, where would you begin, do you think, um, in terms of recommending how to use the book? No, especially given your background in academia, you know what the graduating class background of information is. Uh, you know, and the, the background information that our um, entry-level OTs get on sensory integration varies hugely from program to program. Right. Um, some programs have whole courses on sensory integration and others might have part of a lecture. So um, there's a, a pretty broad span of knowledge. Um, I think unless people have done a fieldwork placement in a site that uses sensory integration, most uh, new grads won't necessarily have the clinical application of the theory. So um, it's an interesting question you ask because of course my immediate response would be read the whole book, but <laughs> that's not realistic and I know that. We just got a request from a publishing house in Italy and they wanted to translate some of the chapters but not the whole book, because they felt like the whole book didn't have relevance to their population. Mm -hmm. So the chapters they wanted to translate included 
chapter four, which is structure and function of the sensory systems, a very neurosciencey kind of chapter. Chapters eight through 11, which are a series of chapters on assessment. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, chapter 22, in which we look at treatment through different lenses. So we take the same child and um, have an analysis of child strengths and needs based on sensory integration and also based on the co-op model. Um, and in addition to those, we recommended to them that they translate chapter one, which is your basic introduction to SI theory. Um, and so that might be a package to begin with, um, one, four, eight through 11, and possibly 22. Um, but in doing that, you miss the treatment chapters. Uh -huh. So um, I would think that people would want uh, to read chapters 12 and 13, which address the art and science of treatment. Um, and chapters 20 and 21, which are really good in terms of treatment planning and implementation. So that's maybe half the book. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so actually, as you were talking, I was thinking about the first chapter um, where I think you grapple with some big challenges that we've had in the field regarding terminology um, and the nosology that was proposed in 2007 um, and kind of the lens through which you've actually made an important decision about how to talk about sensory integration um, and the concepts that related to subtypes um, or manifestations of um, the condition. I, I wonder if you could just talk a little bit about that. Sure. And how you, it's, how it's, you and, and Dr. Bundy kind of arrived at the um, decisions that you made. Yeah, um, and that's actually chapter three. Oh, and okay. It's a, yeah, and historical perspective. Um, one of the things we wanted to do was really hear from the field and um, uh, get background as well as information on moving forward. So in uh, our research, quote unquote, for that chapter, we actually went out and interviewed people who had known heirs, people who had been teaching with her, and then um, moving forward to those who were teaching but maybe were not directly involved with, with heirs. Um, people who had been on the original um, faculty for doing the teaching through the organization that was in California at the time. So we interviewed people really across the country um, and tried to pull together a thread that um, um, stayed above the fray, really, in terms of getting into what are the right terms? Is it sensory integration or is it sensory processing? That kind of stuff. Um, it was an amazingly interesting chapter to pull together. We did a qualitative analysis um, looking for themes across all of the interviews. And um, in the end, it felt really good to be able to pull that together. I also went back into all of Ayer's initial um, papers, and she started publishing in 1954. Oh my and really God. didn't quit until um, about 1988 when she passed away. Okay. Um, so I went back and read all of her original work to try and figure out where some of this angst about terminology might have come from. Um, and then in the end, we had to make some decisions about what terminology we were going to carry through the book. Um, and so that's what we ended up doing with that chapter. So what did you decide um, in terms of the terminology? We stuck with sensory integration. Mm -hmm. um, you will find sensory processing in the book. Um, but our, our model 
which was also developed from with input from people around the country, um, as well as the chapters use the phrase sensory integration. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's great. Um, is there, uh, I'm wondering about um, also the treatment chapters. Um, if I were even a, an experienced clinician, do you, how do you provide a link for the therapist from assessment to intervention um, that provides maybe some guidelines about um, making those decisions and knowing what underlying sensory challenges are impacting the child's ability to function? Hmm. I think the combination of the treat assessment and treatment chapters um, if, if all of them were read sort of well, sequentially, I guess, um, that would give people some really nice insights. The assessment chapters include, of course, the sensory integration and praxis test, but there's also a chapter on assessing without the SIFT, so how we get to that information if we don't have access to it. And there's a whole so chapter using, like using other sensory motor tools. Is that yeah? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And right. there's a whole chapter on clinical observations. So that um, I think we've broadened the scope of assessment in this version of the text. And then uh, art and science of treatment have always been part of this book. But the applications that are seen in uh, that chapter 22, which looks at uh, a child from two very different perspectives, um, that are really useful. And then one I of the chapters... Two, I'm sorry, um, I just wanted to clarify, when you say two different perspectives, can you just elaborate? Oh, that was, yeah, what I said before about yeah. uh, looking at a child with an SI frame of reference and looking okay. at a child with a uh, co-op frame oh, of reference. Oh, okay, so those are juxtaposed in, within that chapter. Right, Yeah. right. Okay. And then we do have um, another chapter that focuses on the application of theory to practice. Um, and in that chapter, we talk about um, Miller's A Secret Approach and the STAR model that you use. Um, we have a chapter that addresses treatment effectiveness, which I think is another really good chapter. So I, I think what we've tried to do is, is take people through from referral to assessment into treatment and then into looking at treatment effectiveness. Right. So, so if a clinician was, um, you know, being challenged, let's say, by their school district or by um, a physician about does treatment work, they, would, they could use some of the references within that chapter to support the argument that yes, indeed, there is um, evidence out there that yeah. supports. Yeah, um, they the could. And, and again, they'll find some of those supports sprinkled throughout the book, but chapter 23, um, it's all about treatment effectiveness. Great, great. Um, are there any um, final words that you would like to add that I haven't um, asked you about? <laughs> yeah, uh, let me just mention that the other thing we added to this version of the book were some chapters where we take the theory base and apply it to specific populations of kids. Um, so we have a, a chapter dedicated to application to different populations of kids, such as kids born prematurely. Mm -hmm. um, of course, kids with ADHD, kids with autism. Um, and then there is a chapter that's specifically focused on the application to children with autism. Um, and we have, um, as we've had in the past, a chapter on complementary approaches to um, sensory integrative in nature or certainly sensory based. Um, so I think we have pulled together with the help of a number of experts around the country, including yourself. Really nice, um, a really nice overview of the whole field. 
Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time today. Um, and uh, we will all look forward to using all the pages and <laughs> roughing them up just like we did the <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. I hope you find it useful. Thank you.